Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 1.4. Let's take a look at this question. As I mentioned before, the first and the most important step is always to check unit of measurement. In this question, the unit of measurement is IPS. In other words, we're going to work with imperial unit. If you remember in previous videos, we always work with metric unit, but this time it's different. So we need to ensure that we are changing our SOLIDWORKS setting to IPS. Now, looking at the question, we have a 3D geometry on the left side, we have a section view, and we have top view. Again, my preference is to focus on top view, having a 2D geometry from the top view, and then using extruded boss feature to make the final geometry. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. Okay, as I mentioned, the first and the most important step here is changing unit of measurement. To do this, you go to the right side of your salt ring and you see a drop down menu. So you click on that and you see the current setting that I have is not correct. It's millimeter gram second. So to change the setting, I simply click on IPS. Okay. Good, now we have the correct unit of measurement. Now let's start the sketching. So I click on a sketch tab here, click on a sketch, and then I choose the top plane. Now again, from a sketch tab, I'm gonna choose ellipse option and make an ellipse here. So I click on the center, go to the right, and this is what I want. Next step, we need two holes on each side of this geometry. So I'm going to go to sketch tab, choose circle, and then draw two circles. We also have another circle in the center of the geometry. So what I'm going to do, I click on circle command again, go to the center of the part and make a circle. Last step is to make a polygon in the center of the part. To do this, again, you go to Sketch tab, choose a polygon here, and then I'm going to draw a polygon. OK, so now we have four different geometries that we wanted in this sketch. Now let's start adding some relationship. First of all, we know that both left and right circle should be in the same plane as center line of the geometry and they should be also the same so what I'm gonna do I click left circle hold control and click on the right circle and from relationship tab I'm gonna use equal this means that I want these two circles to be equal you may ask how I know that these circles are kind of equal the answer is in a drawing if you check here, you see that I have two times diameter of the circle. This means that both of these circles should have the same diameter and that diameter is equal to 0.125 inch. That's why I use this equal relationship between those two circles. Now going back to our geometry, we also want the top line of the polygon to be horizontal. So to do this, I click on this top line and from the left side, I'm going to use horizontal relationship. So I click on it, and now the polygon is kind of a straight. OK, good. Last step is to make sure that the center of each of these circles, the small circles, are in the same plane as the center of the geometry. So to do that, I click on the center, hold control, click on center of geometry and again from the relationship drop down I'm going to choose horizontal and I repeat the same process for the right circle so I click on the center of the circle hold control click on center of the geometry and again horizontal relationship okay we're good now next step is dimensioning this part. Let's add some dimensions to this geometry. We know that from the left side to right side of the geometry it should be 1.6 inch. We also know that from the top side to the bottom of this ellipse 
we have 0.5 inch okay the diameter of the inner circle should be 0.45 inch and the size of each of these circles the small circles should be 0.125 you can see that when I assign the number to the right circle the left circle will be automatically adjusted because of the relationship that we have between these two circles so you don't need to define the diameter of the left circle anymore now what are the dimensions we have we know that from the right side of the geometry to the center of the circle the distance must be 1.175 okay and we have the same things for the left circle so I'm gonna select the center of the circle select the left side of the geometry and then this is equal to 175 okay that's good next dimension that we have is a dimension of the polygon so from the top lane of the polygon to the bottom lane the distance must be equal to 0.25 inch okay that one is also good now if you look at the geometry that I have so far it's not fully constrained and I'm not really sure why it's not fully constrained so let's check in which direction this geometry can move if I click on the top section I can see that I can rotate my ellipse right that means the rotation is not controlled so this problem is happening because I didn't define for the SOLIDWORKS that this geometry needs to be always horizontal. So to do this, I'm going to select on a left point of this ellipse, hold control, and I'm going to select the center of the ellipse. And again, now from relationship tab, I'm going to choose horizontal relationship. If I click on it, now you can see the geometry is fully black which means that it's fully defined so as a, as a hint if you are dealing with a geometry which is not fully defined and you're not really sure what's going on imagine you use all the dimensions but it's not fully defined most of the time trying to move the geometry can give you idea what sort of relationship is missing from your geometry in this case you saw that i tried to move the part and i saw some rotation which kind of indicated to me that the center of this part can move so you need to add some sort of horizontal relationship to make sure that ellipse is always horizontal okay so now we have a fully defined geometry it's time to use extruded feature um, to make the final geometry so to do this, we click on Feature, we go to Extruded Bus, and same as other videos, SolidWorks asks us to select which contours we want to extrude. And to do this, first we need to find the proper thickness for each section of the geometry. So, in order to find required thickness, we can check the drawing again. So let's check that. Here you can see that we have three different dimensions. We have dimension for overall thickness for the thinnest part on the left side. We have the thickness of the extruded bus and we have the thickness of this section. So we are going to use these three dimensions to make the final geometry. So let's do that. Here I'm going to choose the main body and this section and also the center. I want to extrude everything basically to the minimum amount of 0.15 inch that's the overall thickness that I want so let's change this one to 0.15 and that's it okay so the main body we made the actually the main body and we are good here now we go for the second part of the extrusion Again, to do this, we click on Extruded Boss. From the Model Tree, we select the previous 2D sketch that we made. And now, in this 2D sketch, we're going to select only the center part, the polygon, and the circle. And we're going to extrude these two features by 0.15 millimeter. So it's going to be 0.15 
plus 0.15 because we had one overall thickness, one which was 0.15, and now we are adding extra 0.15 on top of it. So it's going to be something like this. And the last step is to click on extruded boss again, select the same sketch, but this time we're only gonna extrude the circular part. The height of this section must be 0.45 inch from this surface, from the top surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm from the from drop down menu, I'm gonna choose the surface. And for that surface, I choose this part. And for the overall height, I'm gonna choose 0.45 inch. Okay, and then I click on confirm. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Now, if you wanna check just roughly, you can click on the section view here, and you can see this is the geometry that we have. Let's make it perpendicular. Okay, you can see it's similar to what we have in a section AA in a question. Now, in order to make sure this is the correct geometry, we need to check the volume. So if I go and check the total volume in this question, as you can see, the total expected volume for this geometry should be 0.146 cubic inch. So in order to evaluate this, we can find this number from SOLIDWORKS. To do this, same as previous videos, we click on Evaluate tab, go to Mass Properties, and then here you can see the total volume. The total volume is 0.15 cubic inch, which is exactly the same as the number we've seen in the question. So this means the modeling that we had was correct and we found the right answer at the end. Okay, so I think that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback, any question, please leave a comment down below. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in other videos.